need of quality in healthcare. The major benefits include improving, reduced medical error, increased patient safety and satisfaction, eliminating waste and rework also increases patient handling capacity and flow, decreased wait times and potentially harmful delays in care, cost effective system, trust in quality of care, organizational efficiency. Let's consider an example to understand the need of quality in healthcare. A 40 year old female patient with body temperature 98.7 degree Fahrenheit, blood pressure of 100 over 69 and a pulse of 70 beats per minute was brought to emergency department, chief complaint of shortness of breath and rash following ingestion of seafood. He has oidema of the throat with a mild strider upon inspiration. Place him on supplemental oxygen and 0.5 mg dose of epinephrine. Shortly following intravenous of the epinephrine, the patient starts having chest pain on his left side and tingling in his fingertips. The nurse informs doctor about this. Did you administer intravenous instead of intramuscular? It was not mentioned so. This was a medication error that occurred due to miscommunication of prescription due to incomplete orders. The nurse's lack of information about drug and administration error and carelessness on the part of doctor in not double checking if the right drug was being administered in the right dose through the right route at the right time to the right patient. Thus, quality in healthcare is indispensable. History of quality in healthcare. Quality in healthcare found its roots much earlier in history as Hippocrates from 460 to 370 BC. Also known as the father of medicine was the first to introduce the concept of do no harm. Two other influential contributors were Florence Nightingale and physician Ernest Goldman. Let's have a look at the video lecture which will summarize you the history of quality in healthcare. History of quality in healthcare. Quality in healthcare found its roots much earlier in history as Hippocrates 460 to 370 BC, also known as the father of medicine, was the first to introduce the concept of do no harm. Florence Nightingale 1820 to 1910, founder of modern day nursing, is recognized the world over as a nursing visionary. Her scholarship and work in promoting the science and art of nursing set Nightingale apart from all others in nursing and in healthcare quality. Nightingale challenged an authoritarian and male dominated society in England to change health care practices in the Crimean War. Her influence helped to save thousands of lives and changed health care forever. Basic sanitation and strict adherence to decreasing the spread of infectious organisms coupled with statistical analysis and graphical presentation on the causes of death brought scientific evidence to nursing and a face to quality care. During the same time that Nightingale's work in nursing and healthcare quality began reaching a peak, physician Ernest A. Codeman, MD, entered the scene. Codeman believed in using end results to promote quality in healthcare. A physician and prominent surgeon on the staff of the Massachusetts General Hospital Codeman pursued an end results system to track the outcomes of patient treatments. Codeman saw this as an opportunity to identify clinical errors whose study could serve as the foundation for improving the care of patients. He advocated making hospital standardization a key purpose of the American College of Surgeons, ACS, which was formed in 1912. Codeman chaired the organization's Hospital Standardization Committee, which established a hospital standardization program. This program would evolve and eventually 
lead to the founding of the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations. The program's concept also was clear. Knowledgeable, professionals should assess hospital conditions and try to achieve consensus among them regarding standards that would have the greatest effect on improving patient care. This principle would become fundamental to hospital standardization and later to hospital accreditation. By 1918, the ACS was serving large hospitals to validate the minimum standard to be used for its hospital standardization program. With the minimum standard in place, by 1922, the survey program expanded to include medium-sized hospitals. Demands for the program grew markedly during the next decades. Fueled by federal legislation enacted in 1946 to fund hospital construction. New facilities were being built in communities nationwide. By 1950, some 3,290 hospitals were on the ACS approved list, representing half the hospitals in United States. Nightingale and Codeman were visionaries in the quest for quality in healthcare. Their work earned them a place in history and sparked the flame for quality that now continues to evolve. Summary Quality is the customer's perception of the value of the supplier's work output. It is a perceived degree of excellence with a minimum usually set forth by the customer and defines the extent to which products, services, processes and relationships are free from defects, constraints and items which do not add value for customers. Quality is the degree to which a commodity meets the requirements of the customer at the start of its life. Customers judge quality through their perceptions. Over the years, business has had to find a way to define and measure quality so that the companies can make products and deliver services to definable standards their customers will accept. Quality has various connotations and different meanings to different people. Quality has come a long way since its early steps from guilds, the factory system, scientific management, terrorism, statistical quality control, total quality management to the latest continual quality improvement. Similarly, the definition of quality has evolved over the ages. Unfortunately, there still is not a single consensus definition for the same. Healthcare is no exception for quality. Quality is helping organizations to improve and differentiate from one another. The beginning of the 20th century marked the inclusion of processes in quality practices. Walter Shewar introduced a concept known as statistical quality control, which focused on controlling processes by making quality relevant not only for the finished product, but for the processes that created it. During the World War II, quality became an important safety issue. Unsafe military equipment was clearly unacceptable, and the U.S. Armed Forces inspected virtually every unit produced to ensure that it was safe for operation. The Japanese welcomed the input of Americans Joseph M. Juran and W. Edwards Deming, and rather than concentrating on inspection, focused on improving all organizational processes through the people who used them. This approach emphasized not only statistics, but approaches that embarrass the entire organization and is known as total quality management. Quality was institutionalized. In the few years since the turn of the century, the quality movement seems to have matured beyond total quality into service, healthcare, education and government sectors. Healthcare quality is giving the right care to the right patient at the right time, every time. There are three basic dimensions to this, structure, processes and outcome. The major benefits include improving, reduced medical error, increased patient safety and satisfaction, eliminating waste and rework also increases 
patient handling capacity and flow, decreased wait times and potentially harmful delays in care, cost effective system, trust in quality of care, organizational efficiency. Quality in healthcare found its roots much earlier in history as Hippocrates from 460 to 370 BC, also known as the father of medicine, was the first to introduce the concept of do no harm. Two other influential contributors were Florence Nightingale and physician Ernest Goldman. Keywords Quality, a subjective term for which each person has his or her own definition. Revolution it is a fundamental change in power or organizational structures that takes place in a relatively short period of time. Process, sequence of interdependent and linked procedures which, at every stage, consume one or more resources, employee time, energy, machines, money, to convert inputs, data, material, parts, etc. into outputs. Sentinel event. It is an unexpected occurrence involving death or serious physical or psychological injury, or the risk thereof. Further readings. 